to think of the body as a community. You have construction workers and maintenance crews building and repairing, policemen keeping watch and ensuring order, and journalists and reporters keeping everyone up to date with what's going on both near and far. When an emergency occurs, all of these different groups come together to sort it out. The language spoken in this community is DNA, and the words are your genes. But like any language, these words can have very different meanings depending on who hears them. My project looks at these words and the interpretations that your body makes in response to a natural disaster of the microscopic sort, an infection. Now, my unusual partner in this investigation is a zebrafish. I use zebrafish in my research for a number of reasons. When young, they're completely transparent, and it's also relatively simple to produce a transgenic animal. This means that I can fluorescently tag different words or genes and watch as their expression changes in real time in a living organism in response to an infection. One word that I'm particularly interested in is a gene called CEPB beta. There are three phases to an infection, in, an infection, induction, propagation, and resolution. During induction, CEPB beta is rapidly expressed in many different cells and tissues of the body, including the liver, which acts as a giant broadcasting center, sending news reports all throughout the body to let everyone know that something is wrong. During propagation, CEPB beta controls the production of neutrophils, chemical warfare experts called in to aid and replace the quickly, repl quickly reduced first responders. However, it also helps direct professional attack cells, such as microglia, the primary immune defense of your brain. During resolution, when the infection is gone, it's important that these messages are stopped and CPU beta is turned off, so that we can begin to clean up and heal. How is this one word producing so many different responses? What other words or genes are involved in interpreting CPU beta? But more importantly, why do we care? Well, Imagine something went wrong. What if a call was dropped or something was heard incorrectly? One word we do know helps interpret CPB beta in the brain is IRG1. When we see IRG1 in microglia, these cells become much better at destroying invading pathogens, but they're also much more dangerous to the host brain cells, a characteristic we call neurotoxic. We see neurotoxic microglia in a range of neurodegenerative disorders, including Alzheimer's, where they are believed to contribute to the disease progression. If we were better able to communicate with these cells, we might be able to treat the disease. But we can't simply target the original message, CPB beta, because of its importance to so many other responses. If we better understood all the words used to interpret CPB beta, we, might be, we would be better prepared to address dangerous miscommunications when they occur. I could use this information with drug screens to find chemicals to improve a weak immune response or reduce an overzealous one. In this way, my research will help improve communications within our body so that we only respond to actual emergencies and can coordinate more effectively when we do.